Right, hello again. Um, so, today, um, looking at a bit of distorting footage that we've previously undistorted. So, this is kind of needed for a kind of CG compositing workflow. So, here we've got Nuke, and this is a shot actually courtesy of uh, Taron, uh, one of our students here at Runel. So, just a bit of variety. I thought I'd use uh, someone else's shot rather than just one of mine. A bit of spice of life. So, this is the original backplate that was shot. Um, and it's a static camera. So, this is a DPX sequence, so it would load in really slowly if I tried to play this in real time. Um, there's not a lot of motion in this shot. Obviously this was filmed with a <coughs> real camera, real lens, and the idea is that we're going to be putting in a CG element into this. So when we want to match our camera, the problem is that a lot of CG applications predictably are going to render undistorted images. So what we usually have to do is bring our original image in, undistort the footage, take that into CG and match our camera up and so on, then render our CG and then finally we then need to distort the uh, rendered images to match the original. So that's what we're going to be looking at here. So when this was originally shot, uh, Taron quite sensibly kind of shot a lens distortion grid. So this is the original lens distortion grid for the shot. So this was then uh, kind of just adjusted, just to boost the contrast a little, and a lens distortion grid was used, obviously, to calculate the distortion on the lens. Then, previously, this had been undistorted using this kind of workflow here. So we've got this lens distortion node. This black outside just kind of ensures that we get some uh, slightly black borders where we otherwise have no image data. The crop. Um, kind of is there just to kind of make sure that we get the full image. This was filmed in 4K, so by default Nuke would have given us basically a 4K image. It wouldn't have changed the resolution of the image. Now when you undistort it, what Nuke is actually doing is slightly stretching and warping this original image, so it usually results in an image that's slightly, slightly greater than the original resolution, usually. Um, and that would have been the case in this case here. So this kind of crop here, so we can see this was originally UHD. Um, so that would have been what, something like uh, 3840 by uh, 2160 or something like that in its resolution. I'm terrible with remembering these things. Yeah, 3840 by 2160. That would have been the original resolution. As you can see, this, this new resolution is actually 3916 by 2203. Get some funny numbers out of this. Um, and this kind of black outside here, you can see that was kind of giving us these slightly uh, little bits of black just at the bottom at the sides of the image because basically when the image is undistorted because of the way the image gets stretched and warped a little bit there's basically no image data here. Now this black outside node is what kind of gives us that. If we disable that you can see that Nuke actually fills that in but it's filling it in by, if we zoom in a long way here, it's probably difficult to see, but it, all it does is it just sort of copies the last row of pixels. So it just it fills it in, but it fills it in with basically useless data. So it's kind of usually more useful to have a black outside node there and just have no data where there is no data. It's also a bit helpful in that it's, then it's usually a bit easier just when you bring an image in to look at one that's been undistorted because if it's got those kind of black borders it's just like yep that's almost certainly an image that's been through an undistort process so even if the file wasn't named correctly or something like that you can look at it and fairly quickly think that's the case. Right that was written out as a sequence of JPEGs. Now what we want to do is look at how we actually take an image and distort it to match the original. Right? Now uh, you might just think, well, just use this lens distortion node and we'll just use that. And, of course, it's kind of right. Unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. So here we've got the actual undistorted image. And it's a simple test of your workflow, of course. If you take the original image, which was distorted with a real-world lens, you go through this workflow to produce an undistorted image. Yep. So hopefully, if you then import this thing you've exported here, the understore, which this is an example frame of that, so if this understored image here, if I can produce another workflow on this, hopefully to end up with the same image as I started with. So we've kind of been all the way around the houses then. We've understored it, 
brought the undistorted image in, then we're going to do some work on that and produce hopefully something that's pretty similar to the original distort, then we know that that workflow is correct and we can apply that same workflow to our rendered CG images and know that they're going to be distorting in the correct way. So that's usually what I try and do is kind of test it with this. Okay, so let's take a copy of this lens distortion node because that will form the, the bulk of the, the work. Yeah? And if I just look at this lens distortion node, I can see it's got some properties up here. So there is some radial distortion on this. If these were both zero, I'd probably be wasting my time here. And by default, this is undistorting. So we might think, let's just select this checkbox. That then kind of reverses this node, so it now acts as like a distort node, but with these properties. So if we were lucky, we'd just hook that right up to there, look at that in the viewer, and we would have exactly what we want. Sadly, of course, that's not the case. So if I look at this image in the viewer here that I see, it's it's still got this resolution, 3916 by 22, which I don't want. Yeah? It has undone the distortion to some extent, which is great, but it's still the wrong resolution. So what I usually need to end up doing is finding a way of making this be the original image resolution. And there's a bunch of ways you can do that. But one of the ways, of course, is to use a merge node and a constant. Because we know that when we have a merge node, the output of a merge node is always going to be, in terms of resolution, equal to whatever comes into this background pipe here. Now, if you set your project up correctly, which we have, the full-size format of the project is 4K UHD, resolution of our original footage. So this constant will be UHD 4K. If you've got your nuke project set on a different resolution, I don't know if I'd left it by mistake set on HD, these nodes that we create here, like rotos and constants, get created our project resolution. So that would come in at HD 1080. You can override it in the node itself and kind of set the format there, but it's, it's usually just easier to set your project resolution to the one you're working with. So there we go, because that's 4K. And I'm going to hook up my lens distortion node. So if I look at that now, that's now given me a UHD 4K kind of output, which is great. So we're kind of getting there. Now, however, we still have a bit of a problem, and that is if I compare this footage with the original. So if I take this merge node here, and I connect that to the viewer, and if I connect my viewer also using the shift and the two key to my original footage here, we can then swipe over our image, and we can see that actually things don't appear in the same place. Yeah, that we can see quite easily. So basically, one side of this image, we're looking at one of these images. Here, the other side of this wipe, we're looking at the other one. Yeah. So, um, so this is probably merge one this side and read two, our undistorted, oh, sorry, our distorted original over here. So, they're in a bit of a problem here. Now, the reason being that what happened when we originally did this with this black outside, this lens distortion here, and particularly this crop node, in order to kind of get this um, lens distortion working, as you can see, when we originally did it, if I look at the lens distortion node, it kind of produced this dotted bounding box with these coordinates here. If I scroll down to the bottom here, it actually has some negative values here, and right up the top here, um, we've got these kind of values up there. Now, um, but the image is actually UHD 4K, so if I had a right node connected right to that, I'd just get a UHD image out. But the crop was there to actually make sure that the image was full frame size. You know, it was actually cropped to, if I look at these crop node parameters here, to basically, I mean, barring a pixel out, if I look at that, it's minus 39, minus 23, minus 38, minus 22. Okay, so a pixel out in one direction, basically to that bottom left coordinate. And if I go and look at the top right coordinate, the original crop was similarly cropping to 
and look at that 3879 okay so again out by pixel and 2182 so out by pixel so within a pixel these were two these values here produced by this lens distortion node so it cropped the frame to full size there you know, so it changed the resolution of that clip but that also kind of in a sense resulted in sort of slightly moving things around so if I want to actually get this back to 4k I need to shift over this footage a little bit to match what we did with that crop so what I'm going to add is just a, a simple transform node and pop that in here so before this lens distortion node what I'm going to do is move it a little bit in here and I'm then going to just enter in these negative XY values here just the left white because I'm going to move the clip I'm not going to crop it so I need to move it over that much left and that much down so minus 38 minus 22 okay so I'm going to just put those in there minus 38 and minus 22 we could link an expression or something like that but we'll copy and paste it would do the same thing yeah so if I now look at my transform so if I look at my original and I then look at my transform it's moved it over left a bit and down a bit we've then applied our distort which is great and we're then sort of turning that into a UHD 4k image yeah uh, and we could if we wanted to even do a crop to uh, get rid of these kind of dotted borders we don't actually have to do that but we could choose to do that um, so basically this UHD 4k hopefully should match our original nearest damn so let's take a look so if I connect that again to number one and I connect my original one to to my number two um, and I've got multiple property transform nodes open there, so let's just close that to get rid of that. Right, so let's have a look now and see how close we are. Now this may be very slightly out, but this is now looking pretty good as I swipe across there. There's really, I don't even know if I zoom in, is there even a pixel difference? No, I think that's pretty damn smashing. Okay, so that's great. So we've got a workflow that's kind of given us back the same image we started with. Now, of course, in and of itself, that's completely pointless. Um, but we now know that this little group of nodes here is going to work to distort other footage. Okay, this one was just distorting essentially an undistorted version of the original. So, one little tip with this though is that when you create a, like a group, which I'm going to do in a minute from these, by default you just got to watch the merge node here because by default this merge node is just going to merge the RGBA channels now you may be dealing with potentially when you're doing compositing a pipe with a multi-channel EXR that may have the beauty pass in your RGBA but you may well have lighting passes, reflection passes, refraction, z-depth, all sorts in other layers in that EXR but by default this merge is only going to work with those RGBA so basically if you group this as a distort and didn't change that coming out of your distort you'd only have the beauty pass and it would have junked all the rest of the data so uh, top tip in this merge node here just select that also merge all and it's going to merge all of our other uh, layers so if we have a multiple multi-channel EXR they're all going to come in there so that's fine so then what we would do is basically select this here and just kind of create a group so we just kind of go into edit node and group and say collapse to group and hey presto we then have a single node that's going to do the same job as all of those existing ones now you might well kind of want to rename that you might want to call that uh, I don't know um, 50 oh, no, I can't start that lens distort 50 mil I don't know what lens it was but you might well kind of want to name it with your appropriate focal length and you can of course you can then copy and paste that you know if you need something else distorted you can always attach that up and know it's going to distort it to the right amount so that's fantastic right just a, a few things you may occasionally want to 
edit the properties of the things in inside this node uh, as you can see by default because I've just made it there will actually be another node graph here so if I just click on this here this is actually this node graph here so if I edit any of these things that's going to edit them in this thing here basically it's just the kind of and you can see that's whatever comes in and there's the output right there okay now of course sometimes you might find that that node graph is not open uh, especially if you've kind of opened and closed your nuke project or something like that and you might want to get back to it you might think just double clicking would do it fortunately it doesn't so one of the ways of doing it is to just select that go to your edit menu go to node and group and then just open the group node graph you can expand the group and it actually kind of recreates all the nodes back here in the main uh, node graph or you can just open the group node graph and then hey presto there it is we can edit it and know that basically it's editing the contents of that okay so that's basically how to create a node that will distort our footage and we'll be using that node when we actually come to composite the main scene but that's for now that's um, kind of distorting our footage in Nuke okay bye for now